Hi, I'm Paul Guppy. I'm Vice President at the Washington Policy Center, and this is our regular update on our activities and exciting events that we have coming up in the near future. So to start off, I thought I'd point out that because it's summertime, there's an idea that it's the so-called slow season in politics and policy, and we don't actually experience that. We are plenty busy with policy issues, being in the media, putting out new commentary, new analysis of what's happening. And the reason for that is, yes, the legislature meets from January through April or May uh, timeframe, and they wrap up and go home. But then the rest of us have to live with the bills and policies that the legislature has enacted in which the governor signed earlier in the year. And now we are seeing that how these policies are actually rolling out. Actually, many bills that are enacted have a July 1 start date, even though the legislature passed them months ago. So now we're not, we're living with these and we're Washington Policy Center is on the ball, um, providing commentary for media and seeing how these policies actually roll out. And actually, <clears throat> the number one policy that everybody is noticing is the governor's cap and trade carbon tax, which was imposed. Todd Myers on our staff was the number one independent analyst in the state who was pointing out the high cost of what this carbon tax would mean for everybody. It's an energy tax, so that means the cost is built into everything. I remember in my younger days when the uh, energy crisis first hit from the Middle East and there was the OPEC oil embargo, all Americans learned uh, an economic lesson, which is when the cost of energy goes up, the cost of everything goes up. So even though the country lived through that, through the energy crisis, now we're seeing an artificial energy crisis, which is created by the decision by our governor to impose this cap and trade system. What Todd has measured is using government data, what is the actual cost of that? And his calculations showed that it's adding about 46 cents to the gallon of a gas, of, um, price of a gallon of gas. And what that does is put Washington state at the top of uh, the nation in terms of how expensive gas is. Uh, we also have a high state tax of about 49 cents and then 18 and a half cents is added by the federal government. So you add those three together and it's more than a dollar a gallon that we are all paying in order to, um, to, to purchase gasoline. But again, that's just one product, which is gas. The cost of all energy, heating our home, running our industries, running air conditioners, whatever it happens to be in life that makes uh, modern life possible, is now more expensive in Washington state than it is in many other places. So speaking of being busy, um, I th did a quick rundown of the media that we have done in just the last 10 days. And we have not only commented on the high cost of gas and, and uh, cap to cap and trade law, but also we've appeared on Cairo 7 News, Crosscut, Kona Radio, Clark County Today, MyNorthwest.com, The Lars Larson Show. We had a specialized op-ed in the Spokesman Review. And our, uh, we've been on the Brandy Cruz uh, podcast talking about education. That's Lee Finna. And Charles, our education expert, is doing an interview with uh, CKNW, it's called, in Vancouver, B.C., so we often get media requests from not only around the country, but sometimes internationally. And the reason I read off that list is that's just in the last week and a half. So it's generally a busy time for us, and we are always available to media to provide solid information about what's happening in our state. Another item <clears throat> that Chris Corey, who is our budget expert, has been tracking is the latest rules on that are being imposed on the cap and or the um, capital gains income tax that the Democrats enacted a few years ago. And the uh, revenue Department of Revenue has now put out residency requirements to make sure that people who are supposed to pay this tax, according to them, are actually paying it. And what the agency did, Chris discovered, is that they put out eight page checklist that you're supposed to go through to see whether you have to pay this capital gains tax. The constitutional problem that Washington state is having is they insist on taxing transactions that have happened in other places. We think this is open to a court challenge, which may be happening. In the meantime, these detailed rules are saying things like you can't sell an asset in another state unless you moved it there at least two years ago. And I'm referring to physical assets. So that would be like a automobile, a coin collection was the example they gave, or any other physical asset that someone owns, if you sell it in another state, 
you will owe the capital gains tax on it if you're above a certain dollar level, uh, $250,000 of profit. And the uh, Department of Revenue is claiming that these excise tax transactions that happen in other places can be taxed by Washington State unless you move the asset two years ago. And they have strict rules about that. They also have strict residency requirements. And we think there's another constitutional problem that the burden is on the taxpayer to prove where your residency is rather than on the government to prove that you are somehow not reporting your residency uh, accurately to avoid fraud. So those are some concerns we have about how that's being worked. But the main problem <laughs> that we see is we've always known that the capital gains income tax is a wedge, a first step to imposing a broad income tax on everybody. And we think the Democrats will begin to construct an argument that says, yes, there's a problem with taxing capital gains or assets or transactions that happen in other places. So the solution for that is we're just going to do a traditional income tax on your earned income based on your residency, which is a standard state income tax that everyone else has. And we think that's the step they're moving towards and that it will no longer be a tax on the so-called rich. Instead, they'll just impose a broad income tax on everybody. We're sure that that's the project that they're working on. The next issue that we tracked was a food stamp reform uh, called the SNAP program, which is run by the federal government. There's a pilot project out of the Department of Agriculture, which would pay low-income people to buy healthier food. They would change the rules. And uh, recipients of this program would be rewarded financially if they shop for fresh vegetables, better nutrition, and better food, which, of course, is a good idea for contributing to human health and reducing medical costs. We were asked to comment on this, and we added a very simple independent analysis, which is why provide extra money or, or a reward for making smart decisions with uh, buying uh, groceries with public money? Why not simply have a limited list of what you are allowed to buy with public money, therefore only healthy foods? There are already prohibitions on buying tobacco products or alcohol with public assistance. Why not just expand that to all foods that are unhealthy and have a limited list of what you are eligible to buy with the fresh fruits, vegetables, dairy, grains uh, that lead to a healthy diet? That made sense to us, and it involves absolutely no additional expenditure. So we provided that commentary, and we'll see how that reform comes out. Uh, next is Charles Prestrude on our staff was asked to comment about the cost of the high-speed rail project, project that's in uh, process between Oregon and Canada, going right through Washington State. And as Charles has pointed out, the estimates are all rosy. Uh, the speed of the train is exaggerated. The cost of construction is low-balled. Uh, he pointed out that this project will almost certainly cost north of $63 billion, about twice what public officials are claiming it would cost. And he also points to two other pilot projects that we've already had, Sound Transit and the California High-Speed Rail System, neither of which has met the benchmarks that officials first promise. In the case of Sound Transit, it's exactly the two factors that you would expect. They have never met their passenger uh, miles traveled goal that they promised. They've never met that benchmark. And as we all know, sound transit is turning out to be vastly more expensive than was promised. So what we see with these uh, risky uh, transportation projects is there's no accountability. Uh, officials are not held to account for misleading the public, making promises, getting the project started, and then just going ahead and running up the cost. <clears throat> so uh, Charles has been on top of that. We are hopeful that this high-speed rail project to Canada never occurs because we think it's a, a waste of money. Uh, Charles also points out that uh, car travel and aviation are becoming more efficient, and that is the way that people are choosing to travel instead. And with that, um, I will wrap up with a quick review of exciting events that we have coming up. So in August, we have a Tri-Cities Summer Social event with our YP program that is on in August, uh, first week of August. And uh, we have an exciting speaker there. It's actually the current Miss America who is studying nuclear engineering. And she is, will talk about how to get clean energy in the future. We think that will be a great event. We have another on-the-go event online, live on Facebook, 
Facebook. That's on August 8th. We have a, a Seattle Young Professional Social on August 8th and a YP Summer Social in Spokane on August 15th. Those will be great events. And then we have our Bellevue Dinner is coming up on October 13th. We have a Freedom of Speech Advocate Barry Weiss is speaking at that. And then earlier in September, September 15th, is our annual dinner in Spokane. And we have a panel of Fox News commentators who will be speaking at that event. And we'll likely have another major speaker there as well. So that's what we have coming up. That's our update. And uh, I will be back again with another update in the future. Thanks.